This video is sponsored by Cake Wallet, the easiest open source wallet to store Bitcoin, Monero, and Litecoin securely on mobile and desktop devices. When buying, selling, and exchanging crypto or trading for gift cards, Cake Wallet ensures privacy and security, giving you the keys to your coins. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Daily Zest. I'm your host, Randy Hipper, here on a lovely Monday. It's a Monday. Crypto never stops. It's a beautiful time to be here. It's a beautiful time to be talking about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. It's a beautiful time to be in this chat. So if you are here, make sure you smash these likes, you subscribe, you share the stream out with friends so more people can know about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, the zest, everything going on in the markets, even though the markets are closed today. Isn't that crazy? Bitcoin's 24-7. The market's just sleeping. <sighs> But we're awake, we're here, we're ready to get after it. I want to thank our lovely sponsors, Cake Wallet. Make sure you check out Cake Wallet, an open source beautiful wallet to store your cryptocurrency and buy some gift cards so that way you could spend your crypto in stores. I did a video on it a while back. It's amazing. Check it out. Also check out Market Cipher. Link is in the live chat and in the description. Use code Missing Crypto or code Zesty for 20% off. Now, my friends, I want to say hi to everybody in the chat. Much love to everyone. Uh, there's Porky in the chat over there on the TikTok. Thank you for coming. Welcome to the stream. Oh, wow. We have over 100 people over there on TikTok. Make sure you guys smash these likes. Share the stream out with friends. Give me a follow if you can. We have a goal to get to 10,000 uh, followers over there on the TikTok. I want to say hi to everyone here. We got Crypto Outcast in the chat. I know Joe was here earlier. Is Joe still here? Joe, Joe was giving me trouble. Why are these streams so early? But then Creighton actually came in and defended my honor. So thank you, Creighton. I don't know if Creighton's here yet. We got Eric, Alexandra G. Nice to see you, girl. Alexandra G is the best. The best. Eric is over there. Bulldog, Randy, Emma, um, Irm Irmry? Uh Imri. 12. Nice to see you. I hope I said your name correct. Kenny O's in the chat. We got Taco Berry, my fave. Hola to you, my friend. Nice to see you. Where's, where's, uh, hmm, Taco Berry. Where's your amigo? Uh, we need automatic beats in here. We do have automatic beats. Nice to see you. Do we have the mining squad out here? Matthew K. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Who else we got in here? Colin McKenzie. Da, da, da. Sorry, I need glasses, guys. Matthew DeGroza, nice to see you. T-Bone is here. Aaron, what's up? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Wow, we got a lot of people. We got So in the chat. Jimmy, oh, there's Jimmy. Jimmy, what's up, Jimmy? Uncle Jimmy, welcome to the chat. Daniel Perez, War Player, Crypto Surge. Kevin Kiddo said hello from the UK. Well, hello, my friend from NYC. Nice to see you. Welcome to the show. I love our international fam. I love our global Zesty fam. You guys can feel free to comment where you are from. I just love seeing all the different countries everyone is from. It's beautiful. Everyone comes from different places, different socioeconomic statuses, different race, religion, whatever. But we all here. We're all here, part of one beautiful revolution, which is Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, decentralization, and the movement of empowering yourself by being your own bank. What's up, Flex, dude? Sophisticated in the chat. Ian, nice to see you. Liberty by Sweat, yo, yo. Nice to see you, Ian F. Cool. We got a lot of beautiful individuals here. A lot of individuals. So we're going to get after it. If you guys are a member, make sure you smash those member emojis. You share those out. And we do have a goal of 100 likes and 100 live viewers. So I do hope we could grab 100 likes and 100 live viewers today. We're already halfway to our goal almost in terms of viewers. So make sure you guys are also entering that poll. How you feel about Bitcoin this week? Joshua V, I'm up early today. Yeah, I, I, I really do like getting up early. I like doing the 930 shows. I think 930 shows are kind of a vibe. But feel free to comment on that in the chat if you think 9.30 a.m. is a five. Invest in yourself. How's it going? I'm chill. How are you? Uh, you're working hard, Jimmy. All right. Keep working hard, Jimmy. Keep getting after it. You're the coolest kid, so you got to. Oh, you're from Florida, war player. Oh, I would love to head out to Florida right now. Even though, isn't there a heat wave going on in Florida right now? I saw on the news or something. It was like 104 degrees in Miami or something like that the other day. Crazy. Crazy. New York isn't that bad. It's only like 72 degrees. It's literally like room temperature out here. It's so boring. I want, I need heat. I, I, I love heat. Um, okay, so we're going to get into the charts because the charts are getting hot. It's getting hot out here. It's getting hot. It's getting hot. You're from Minnesota, Patrick. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Let's jump into the charts. I'm so excited. I don't know about you guys. I'm excited about life. I'm excited about Bitcoin. I'm excited about crypto. So if you guys are sharing that love, you better be smashing these likes right now. We got Bitcoin, $26,537.60. Crazy stuff. 
crazy stuff. A little bit of a rebound over the weekend. Nothing too zesty, nothing too crazy, but I am happy to see that there is a curvature here, a curvature in the in the money flow here. We were heading down and then we kind of took went the other way in terms of money flow. We are still in the red. But it does seem like we are approaching that zero line. We are heading to glory, which I would like to see. The VWAP headed over the zero line pretty confidently. It was like, uh, you know, it was I. But as you saw this little yellow VWAP wave pop above that zero line, you did see a little bit of an uptick in price going on here. But as you could see, as the VWAP kind of evened out, so did the price for the past two, three days. So I do hope that the momentum could pick up here. I do hope that this could be like a huge anchor wave. We have some trigger waves after that when we usually see that uh, change in momentum. Um, and we see like a lot of, again, anchor waves, trigger waves. You see an uptick in price and everything like that. Market Cypher is just letting us know the honest truth, which is that buyers seem to... Be a little confused. We're not seeing that green money flow that we saw back in February. I would like to see those levels of green money flow back. I just see so much red here, and I'm sick of it. Sick of it. Even the volume here, you can see like the volume on Bitcoin really isn't crazy. I think that we haven't had any crazy events going on really in the market, although our national debt are, is reaching all-time highs. The dollarization is definitely happening, which we go over quite a lot on this show. But I, I do want to let you guys know that, again, Bitcoin... There's nothing much stopping Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin really is like, again, the safe haven for people. We, I was talking about Mike. I was talking about it with Michael Saylor this past Friday, just talking about how again, Bitcoin is something that no one can take from you. The necessity for Bitcoin is still here, and and price will reflect that. Uh, hopefully, at some point soon. <laughs> hopefully, at some point soon. Now we do have. Uh, we're kind of in between this range again of twenty twenty four thousand seven hundred fifty dollars and twenty seven thousand one hundred. So we essentially like went right through that. Um, what was this? It was March 17th, kind of on the 16th, but mostly on the March 17th. We kind of popped above. We broke out of this range that we were sideways trading from, popped into this one, which was between, again, 27.1 and around 28.4. We broke below that, kind of tried to test this level of 27.1 a few times, but didn't really make it. We kind of failed. And and then we kind of tried it back down to the top of our range here, but only by wick lows. There were no kind, there were no candles, opens, or close closes right at this point of twenty four eight, which again is really interesting to see. But I am hoping that again we've basically had no trading going on. We're at twenty six thousand five hundred thirty seven dollars today, only up 076 percent. The price action really isn't popping, guys. We need to see pop in price action. I hope the bulls step in. We could take a look at the weekly uh, since we just closed out the week. Isn't that special? Isn't that special? We just closed out the week. I feel like we're we really are at some critical levels. I do feel like there's there's bound to some have something happen right now. Again, sideways traded for even here. Sideways traded for so long. We had a pop, but then we retraced. I'm just really hoping that we have a green week. If you guys think we're gonna have a green week, smash that G. If you think we are going to have a red week. Smash that R. You got to let me know, my friends. You got to let me know how you feel. It matters what you feel because you guys are what make up the charts at the end of the day. The buyers, the sellers, the emotion, the psychology of it all. This is what makes up the charts. Raphael giving me your thoughts. Thank you, Raphael on TikTok. Again, hopefully we can rebound this week and this week we close above 27.1. That would be that would be zesty. At least get back into this range right here. And keep calm, hodl on. Again, we knew when nap time was happening, everyone was sleeping on Bitcoin. I still think people are sleeping on Bitcoin. I still feel like a lot of people have that bear market mentality right now. And I, I just, I don't see why. Because Bitcoin is so fundamentally relevant now more than ever. The bank closures, bank runs, this is all still happening. This is still an issue. I think people just have short memories just because we haven't been really flipping out about it since March or even May doesn't mean anything. We still have to really watch out for this. Let's go to Ethereum. Ethereum, sheesh, man. Sheesh, Ethereum. Ethereum is below $1,800, which you guys know I don't enjoy under $1,800 Ethereum. But we are at $1,728 Ethereum, up 0.46%. Again, really not much price action going on here. I wish I had more zesty news for you. Other than this range coming back into play again, where we have we were between $1,450 and 
$1,700, even Ethereum. Then we sideways traded between 1700 and 1820 for a while. Then we went from 1820 through to 1911 for a while. Just sideways trading so much with Ethereum. We broke down um, throughout these points, and now we are in this range again. But I am hoping that, again, we stay above $1,700 Ethereum. We go to $1,800 Ethereum and just have a good time. And just have a good time. I just can't believe what's going on right now. It's just like, it's it's... This is, again, where the market puts you. Like, it makes you think, like, where is it going to go? Are we safe? Are we not? But again, we always know that Bitcoin cryptocurrency is inevitable. There's a lot of clarity that has yet to come out with cryptocurrencies. But I do think it is underway because, again, so many things are being called securities. People are questioning, is Ethereum a security? We're going to get answers soon. Trust me, guys. We are going to get that clarity whether they like it or not. Even the Hinman emails uh, if, if or the Hinman speech, if you guys take a look at that, kind of plays into ETH, Bitcoin, saying that they are commodities, et cetera, et cetera. Even we have videos of Gary Gensler saying that Bitcoin, ETH, Litecoin, all commodities. But again, we're waiting for that confirmation. The CFTC kind of did give us confirmation, if you guys think about it. CFTC did actually come out and say Bitcoin, Litecoin, ETH um, are commodities. Speaking of this week, let's actually look at the weekly before I go over to Litecoin. Okay, beautiful. Here's our week, three red weeks here for Ethereum. Hope We're starting off in the green here. Again, last week, we kind of had this wick low of $1,620. Oof, oof. We did bounce back up, though. I am hoping that we head over to, again, over $1,800 Ethereum. Maybe $1,814. That would be, that would be a vibe. Or $1,820 Ethereum. Let's see. Let's see how that turns out this week. I am eager. I am eager. We've just been sideways trading for so long. I really feel like these are just critical levels right now. We're at a tipping point, friends. We are at a tipping point. Let's talk about Litecoin. Someone get the Litecoin having countdown for me. Uh, por favor, in the chat, pretty please. That would be absolutely amazing. We have $77.23 Litecoin today. Up 0.08%. Really not trace. It's just sideways trading. Got to be honest. We, ha we had a dip in money flow, but it seems like we are curving back upwards. VWAP headed over the zero line, but it wasn't too confident. And now we're like, Pfft. so hopefully that picks back up and we have a good time. And we are printing green dots here, but I, you know, that could go either way here. We do have a big wave here. Hopefully we form it. This is an anchor wave of trigger waves. You know what I'm going to say, et cetera, et cetera. And we have some movement in price here because the Litecoin having is pretty soon. Does anyone have the Litecoin having in the chat? I got to get that. I got to get the Litecoin having. $77.25 Litecoin. We've just been having green days since the 15th. It is now the 19th. So we're literally four or five days into green days here with Litecoin after we took a literal 17% dip in one day. In one day. See, we were consistently making higher lows. And I, I, I guess we are. But it's just, guys... What's going on here with Litecoin? What is going on? I'm hoping, again, we could rebound here with Litecoin. Litecoin doesn't need the rest of the market to move. So hopefully it could re it could make up with this this hand, uh, this, ugh, I can't even speak, this red candle. We make up for that and we head back up to the to our range of $91 Litecoin, past $95 Litecoin, head back to 102 or hit, close above 105 one day. I want to see one day we have a closure above 105. That would be absolutely beautiful. Let me know what you guys think in the chat as I head over to the weekly for Litecoin. We have 42 days until the halving, Salty. Thank you. Appreciate that. Let's go. The halving is a beautiful time, man. A beautiful time. Beautiful. We closed out the week in the red, unfortunately. We had a big red a week before that with Litecoin because of that huge drop. That was crazy. But... Hopefully this week we can have some actual trading here at Litecoin. Again, there was not much going on uh, the week before. Now, again, volume isn't crazy. Buyers are confused. What is going on? What is going on, my friends? I am just hoping, hoping that we could get some price movement back here. Let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. All right, Creighton, uh, what's up, dude? 
uh, Abominable is here. We got Rick, Vollmer, and oh, Mike in the chat. Mike Vollmer in the chat. Rolling 69ers. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, who else that we got in the chat? Tyler, Andy Rogers. Nice to see you. Joe Harvey is in the chat as well. Oh, you are here, Joe. Nice to see you. Salty Brewer, Chad, uh, Varad. Nice to see you. Hi, Varad. We got the Brothers T. Uh, <laughs> MTC said, bring the heat. Yes, I am here to bring the heat, man. I need to see some zest. What's up in my hero? Hold on. Let me, let me get a sip of my, let me get my coffee mug. I got to show you guys my coffee mug. All right, I got my coffee mug for you guys. This is beautiful. I hope you guys are all fueled by coffee and Bitcoin today. It is beautiful time to sip your coffee if you are here. It is early here in the AM. It is 9.55 AM here. Misco, good morning to you, my friend. Crypto Outcast, Mr. S, John Foster said, hola, Randy and friends. John, do we have Emma here? And do we also have uh, Sophia here for Kenio? Do we have the kiddos out here? All the Gen Z's watching the show. I see we have 83 people watching. We got 67 likes. Let's make sure we smash these likes. Share the stream out with friends. Let's get 100 likes and 100 live viewers, guys. Bax said, hey, from Australia. Well, hello, my Australian friend. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. We love our international friends. We have no G in the chat. George, thank you for your two roses. Appreciate it. Guys, that was the first contribution of the stream. It was two roses on TikTok. So thank you. Appreciate it. We're going to get into the we're going to get into the news but right before that I lied. Right before we get into the news, we have this beautiful show that I did uh, with Michael Saylor. Had a really great time. This was on Friday that we talked about the future of Bitcoin, individualism, everything you need to know. So if you guys did not see this, I'll drop the link in the chat, but make sure you guys uh, watch it afterwards. Um, but don't leave us now. Watch it afterwards. You could bookmark it for later. But this is a, a really cool show, and I hope you guys do check it out. If you did, guys did check it out, put a yes in the chat. If you didn't get a chance to check it out, put a no. Let me know if you guys saw the chat, uh, if you guys saw the podcast, what your guys' thoughts on it and everything were. But yeah, I really had a, I really had a great time, and I hope you guys got a chance to check it out. It was just under an hour, so it's a really good and easy watch. We got Robert. Nice to see you. Welcome to the chat. Also an international friend. Enzo, nice to see you as well. Dan, nice to see you. So you guys did watch it. Awesome. I did see a lot of you guys. Um, Castiglione said, you should do lives on TikTok. This doesn't have much reach. I am live on TikTok, my friend. You guys could go check that out. I do have a goal of 10,000 followers on TikTok if you guys want to go follow me over there and help me out. But again... Check out this show with Michael Saylor when you have a chance later. Oh, B team said it was a great watch. Thank you. Appreciate it. We do have, I pulled up the crypto bubbles today because I thought the bubbles were cool. Now, this is just showing you kind of what's popping uh, in the top 100, what the bigger gainers, losers are. Hex, Hex has been ouchy uh, lately. I don't even want to talk about that too much, but we have a few coins that are, are popping. Um, but as you can see, I feel like every all the alts kind of are down a little bit today. We're not really seeing like a crazy amount of things going on, a, a crazy amount of price action. Again, all, you can see p down 0.5, down 2%, down 3.5%, up 1%. Um, the only the biggest gainer here seems to be FTT, ironically, up 6.5% almost. And the biggest loser seems to be like this Q coin coin. Pepe is still out here down 0.3%. Oh, Pepe, man. What's I feel bad for little Pepe. I hope Pepe bounces back soon. I heard actually um, Gensler was actually doing good over the weekend too. Trust Wallet Token is doing good. But this is your just top 100. And these are all little bubbles. And I thought the bubbles were cool to show you guys. So there we go. Friends. It comes to a point where inevitably, as always, the money printer goes burr. 
which is why we love Bitcoin so much. Because we opt into a system where it's a decentralized financial ecosystem in which we understand that there is an inflation schedule every four years called the halving. The Litecoin halving is coming up in 40 days about. This is essential to having, again, that finite supply of 21 million Bitcoin, 84 million Litecoin. Peer-to-peer transactions, again, opting into a system and opting out of another. Who pays the consequences for the money printer going burr? Who pays the consequences for all of these actions done by all of these centralized entities? You and I, especially the younger generation that has to deal with this problem the most. Our national debt hit $32 trillion two weeks after the debt ceiling deal. This is insane, actually insane. The, again, friends, the U.S. national debt hit $32 trillion for the first time ever this week. The Treasury Department released Friday said a federal borrowing fed, said federal borrowing crossed the $32 trillion mark on Thursday, less than two weeks after President Biden signed into legislation into signed legislation into law that suspended the debt ceiling. We're that bill, about which backing. not a game, not whoa, Kevin Hart just went off on us, dude. Sorry, I heard that in the background. I was like, where is that coming from? Okay, sorry again. The national debt hit $32 trillion two weeks after the debt ceiling deal. This is the first time ever. It's an all-time high. The federal... The Dega released on Friday, said federal borrowing crossed the $32 trillion mark on Thursday, less than two weeks after President Biden signed the legislation into law that suspended the debt ceiling. This included tens of billions in spending cuts demanded by the Republicans, which allowed the government to borrow whatever it wants until 2024, when the debt ceiling suspension ends. Again, money printer going burr. And when do we ever have a say in what happens here? Literally never. Absolutely never. And again, the national debt is growing as long as the federal government keeps spending more than it collects. In the first eight months of the current fiscal year, the government has already spent $1.2 trillion more than it collected. Annual budget deficits of $1 trillion or more are expected in the foreseeable future under current law. But that deficit is much lower than deficits racked up by the government during the pandemic. The government spent more than $3.1 trillion more than it took in in 2020, and the deficit fell a little to $2.8 trillion in 2021. Again, we spent a lot of money in 2020. If you guys look, 40-plus percent of our money supply was printed between 2020 and 2021. That is years of wealth, decades of wealth printed in one year. But according to Janet Yellen, everything is fine. What did she say again? Janet, hold on, what? Smash, she's like, share the stream out, she said. And also she said what? And take an economy that is performing very well. We've had the fastest recovery from a downturn um, that we've ever seen and the fastest recovery of any nation around the globe. Um, The unemployment rate is near a 50-year low. The economy is doing well. Oh, thanks, Janet. Appreciate you, bro. The economy's doing well. The economy's doing well. But what about our dollar dominance? Is this something we should be worried about as as well as the national debt? The fact that uh, the use of the dollar has diminished and, and gone down against competing currencies over the years? 
there's been some increase in holdings of other reserve assets, but that's something to be expected uh, in a growing world economy where there so is a desire to diversify, but so we should expect less use of the dollar, is what you're saying. We, we, should, ex we should be we anticipating. Should, we should expect, in, over time, gradually in, increased share of other assets in reserve holdings of countries. It's a natural desire to diversify, but the dollar is far and away okay. the dominant okay. reserve asset. It's asset. still a huge concern for us. The dollar is far and away the most dominant reserve, but she didn't really want to answer the question as to the reserve asset, really. So other countries are actively trying to ditch our currency, as we know here. Countries worldwide are dropping the U.S. dollar. De-dollarization is the global movement in China, Russia, Brazil, BRICS countries, Asian countries. We have our list that we always refer to. China and Russia are trading their own currencies. Beijing and Brazil have also dropped the dollar in bilateral trade. The UAE is using the Chinese yuan. Um, for gas trades through a French company. Southeast Asian companies are de-dollarizing their trade, promoting local payment systems, local payment systems. You have Kenya that's also has their, um, that also has their president promoting de-dollarization and telling their people to actually not use the dollar anymore. So this is something that's really crazy and important. Now, Janet Yellen also was saying that she doesn't even consider inflation um, when it comes to a recession. But that's just another point that she made. Now, again, de-dollarization is continuing to, continu uh, continuing to go on right now, as well as this new headline, Bangladesh. I found this earlier today. Bangladesh expresses formal interest in joining BRICS nations. So again, with joining BRICS nations, this calls for the movement of de-dollarization, which is happening in other BRICS nations as well. So as Bangladesh is joining BRICS, we have so many more people to be concerned about because other people, especially smaller countries, they'll go where the trend is, right? If there's someone that is, or a bunch of countries that are now ditching the dollar and using something like the yuan, even though it's the Chinese yuan, they won't have a choice. They're going to have to flop and be like, all right, if we don't change our currency and what we are paying people in, then we will not survive. We won't be able to trade. I hope, again, as, as the crypto crackdown is going on within the United States and de-dollarization is an active movement across the world, that they realize that crypto isn't that bad, that crypto could actually help the dollar. Well, they're pushing away stable coins and cryptocurrency. If you allow stable coins to prosper, then you could bring apart hyper dollarization where you give people more accessibility to the dollar that maybe wouldn't have it before. Crypto Wolf, thank you for the heart me and the TikToks. Appreciate it. Gensler, though, took it personal. I guess he's upset with us, guys, because this is what he said. Hucksters, fraudsters scam artists, Ponzi schemes, the public being left in line at the bankruptcy courts. We've seen this story before. Huckster. Hucksters. Oh my gosh, my friends. I am heartbroken. I am heartbroken. Well, if cryptocurrency was so bad, then why do all of these big institutions want to be a part of it? You have multiple countries, banks that are looking to add Bitcoin to their portfolio, that are adding Bitcoin to their portfolio, opening Bitcoin trading internationally. Now, even BlackRock. I thought this was funny. How it started versus how it's going. Take a look. October 2017, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink calls Bitcoin an index of money laundering. Well, isn't that funny? Because nowadays, in 2023, he's saying BlackRock is filing for a spot Bitcoin ETF with Coinbase as a crypto custodian. Oh, wow. Isn't that funny? Now, people are speculating like they're, uh, whether this is good, but BlackRock spot ETF is not the same as Grayscale's product. So we already have GBTC that's out here, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. So... 
BlackRock's iShares unit on Thursday filed an application with the SEC to create an iShares Bitcoin trust. The name and other details of the proposal sparked some confusion among the industry experts as to whether they were applying for an ETF or a trust similar to the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, GBTC. The answer is both. Quote, it's a reminder of how complex ETF terminology is, says the editor of Crypto is Macro Now said. Technically, BlackRock's proposal is for a trust, but it's a trust that allows redemptions, so it functions just like an ETF. In this sense, the iShares product is nothing like GBTC, which has no redemption mechanism. The market hears trust and thinks that it will be like GBTC with no redemptions, but that's not the case. The key distinction is that an ETF for spot Bitcoin will be able to buy Bitcoin at the end of the trading day to bring the fund's assets in line with its trading price. A trust does not have the ability to do that. A trust will thus occasionally trade higher or lower than the value of its underlying assets, sometimes substantially, an issue currently facing GBTC, which has been trading, uh, changing hands at a wide discount, currently about 40% of its net asset value for years. They've also been attempting to convert its trust into a spot Bitcoin ETF for some time, but it has been rejected multiple times by the SEC, which cited worry about market manipulation, among other concerns. But of course... BlackRock is hoping to get past this price manipulation and the market manipulation, which is crazy. We could take a look at GBTC if you guys would like. It, but GBTC up 12%. Oh, is this? Yeah. There we go. But again, nothing like, you know, again, this is just... Another way for TradFi people to get in. I do think that, of course, people might feel better that BlackRock is coming in, but BlackRock is like the big money. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of people that look for validation from, you know, Grayscale or BlackRock. But the thing is, a lot of people just don't really understand. They're like, oh, you know, at least I'm in the market. I'm in the BTC market. You're not really buying Bitcoin if you're buying an ETF. You're not really buying Bitcoin if you're buying even GBTC, which I understand it's a way for retail investors to come in. And what I did realize during an interview uh, on the Missing Crypto show with Mike Alfred is that he was saying something to the degree that hedge funds, if you want to have your own hedge fund, or if you're running one in general, you have limits as to what you could invest in. So they limit how much Bitcoin you could buy, how much crypto you could buy. So if you hit your limit with buying crypto, you then have to go buy something and get exposure somewhere else, like GBTC. So I get where maybe something like an ETF or a trust will come into play. However, you're still not investing in Bitcoin itself, which is what you always want to do. This, I guess, just lets retail investor or like, you know, trad fibros feel better about stuff. I don't know. What do you guys feel about this uh, BlackRock stuff? Throw this, throw that in the chat. Give me your opinions. Oh, we have 92 viewers and 92 likes as we should. Let's get 100 likes and 100 live viewers or 150 likes. Let's root for that. Hi, MetaMask asking for 150 likes. I'm with you. I'm with you. You find it bullish. Listen, again, you're not buying Bitcoin if you are buying this ETF so or if you're buying a trust. So you have to make sure you are wary of, again, what the fundamentals of this space is. This isn't Bitcoin isn't a stock. Bitcoin isn't a bond. It's nothing like anything. It's like a mix of currency. It's a mix of property. It's something that really can't be classified um, in the traditional financial world, which is what I think they actually struggle with at the end of the day. But we want to be our own bank. We want to leave the traditional financial system. We want to leave the banks so that way we could be our own bank. We are in control of our own value. If you're investing into an ETF or a trust, you are not doing that. You're just maybe getting some exposure into the crypto space through the traditional financial system, which is a controlled market etc, etc. You know my rants, you know my rambles. But again, Bitcoin cryptocurrency, be your own bank, buy Bitcoin itself if you are looking to get into the space for real. And once you buy that cryptocurrency, you put that in your own wallet and you be your own bank. You start your digital revolution right there and then. Yes, we are one, over 100 likes. Let's get after it. If you're watching this show, you wouldn't buy the trust. <laughs> 
Basically, basically. Mr. NC, nice to see you. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. Exactly. Exactly. Marky Mark, nice to see you. Flat smack. MT said sailor interview was great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Ramil is here. Who else is here? Am I missing anyone? Oval Bore. We got MB Global, Andy S. Fla oh, I, I said like, hi to Flat Smack. Alexandra G. It's like, oh, sheesh, this guy. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. If you guys are here, make sure to say hello to me. Let me know that you're here. Give me some comfort. Uh, 150 likes. Let's get after that. Oval Boar said, you got me, damn. I do see you, bro. I do see you. JB says, JB is pro. Thank you for your heart. Ro Fibonacci, hello to you. No, G, I didn't forget about you. I said hi to you before. Um, who knew the most interesting man alive knew so much about Bitcoin? Are you talking about yourself, Creighton? Tom, nice to see you. Good morning. All right. We do have some updates in terms of Binance now. Of course, Binance under siege from the SEC, under siege from the government. Ah, and you know why? It's because CZ Binance doesn't need the U.S. They just opened a U.S. subsidiary. So that way people in the U.S. have access to crypto. They get to do some stuff here. Now, it was, it was kind of very boring, the trading that was going on on Binance US compared to internationally because we barely got access to any coins. There was no leverage, any cool stuff that people wanted to do on there. Nonetheless, there were still a bunch of crackdowns saying that CZ Binance uh, was directly doing stuff. So they directed at CZ Binance, which was a little different than Coinbase, where they were just coming after them being an unregistered securities broker and they're staking. Whereas, again, it was more about CZ Binance. It was more about them maybe commingling funds, et cetera, et cetera. There was a move to freeze Binance US's assets, which could inevitably obviously impact the customers. Binance did end up halting, Binance US, did end up halting USD deposits. And there are no USD withdrawals, I think, at that time, because I think the banking partners were coordinating to shut them down by June 13th. It is now the 19th. So now Binance US, as they posted on Twitter, is in a crypto-only exchange. No USD. The judge signs off on Binance SEC deal to move all U.S. customers and wallet keys back onshore in lieu of restraining order. A federal judge signed off on a temporary agreement between the U.S. SEC, Global Crypto Exchange Binance, and its U.S. affiliate to have Binance U.S. take steps to ensure only local employees can access customer funds as the regulator and companies work through the lawsuit. The parties announced a deal late Friday to ensure that Binance U.S. employees can access customer funds in the short term, which Judge Amy Berman Jackson of the District Court of the District for Columbia signed early Saturday. The judge also ordered the parties to begin proposing timelines for the broader lawsuit. According to the proposed agreement, Binance U.S. will take steps to measure that no officials from Binance Holdings, the global exchange, will have access to private keys for wallets or hardware wallets, a root access for Binance U.S.'s Amazon Web Service tools. The U.S.-based crypto trading platform will share detailed information about its business expenses, including estimated costs in the coming weeks. The deal proposed uh, responded to an SEC motion to freeze all of US, Binance U.S.'s assets while it pursues the exchange for securities-related charges. The regulator said it was concerned that the funds could be moved offshore or records destroyed if it was not granted a temporary restraining order, TRO. Binance U.S.'s attorneys pushed back, saying that freezing all assets would amount to a death penalty. Judge Jackson told the parties that it would be better for them to come to an agreement on a proposed stipulation than to have her craft a restraining order, which would come with a two-week time limit. Two weeks would give insufficient time to prepare, given more than 4,000 pages of exhibits the parties have already filed, she said during a hearing earlier last week. U.S.-based customers will still be allowed to withdraw their funds during this time, but they wanted to create a new crypto wallet that global employees have no access to. The proposed agreement will address some of the stated concerns, but the SEC still sued Binance last week on charges of offering and trading unregistered securities, but also alleged massive commingling of funds, and the proposed agreement doesn't delve into the broader suit at all. On a Saturday tweet, Binance US said this fight has damaged our business and our reputation, but not our fighting spirit and our resolve to defend ourselves against unwarranted charges. So Binance US is still saying, hey, we didn't do anything. 
we're not worried. It hurts our reputation. It hurts how maybe people that don't know what's happening see us. We will not give up and we will not let this take over us. We will not give up. And why should they? And why should they? If they are not doing anything wrong, then they should at least stick up from themselves. See, again, CZ Binance has been getting the brunt of this FUD since FTX days. Since FTX went down, they were like, oh, what's CZ Binance doing? And every single time he has come through and he hasn't been taken out. Now, again, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors with Binance or Binance US, but at the time being, it just seems like a very coordinated attack. Even if you look back to when they were coming after BUSD a few months ago, they sent Paxos a Wells notice for BUSD saying it was a security, the SEC. But they didn't send a Wells notice to Paxos over their own stable coin. At the time, BUSD was a top three stable coin. But then the CFTC came out right after that and said BUSD was a commodity. Now the SEC is saying it's a security again. We have two agencies that don't agree or maybe just aren't communicating or maybe just trying to throw us off overall. But that's it. DGen Crypto Coffee, nice to see you. Hope you, you guys all have your coffee out. We are fueled by coffee and Bitcoin out here. Oh, someone on TikTok is saying Bitcoin's a Ponzi. I should run away now. Run away. Phil, nice to see you. Uh, who do do? Patrick Murphy, nice to see you. There better be over 100 likes. That's what I like to see. <laughs> we always love to see over 100 likes. Let's get one. We, we don't have 100 live viewers yet. We were very close. We have over 90. Let's get 100 live viewers. Let's get 150 likes. Hi, Raph. Nice to see you, Raph. Welcome, welcome. Oh, no, I accidentally just exited something okay there we go i got it back now we have xrp news if you guys are xrp heads then you guys can pay attention to this one hinman documents release in sec ripple case is a boost to ether says jp morgan because of what hinman said there we could go over that the release of the hinman papers last week in the sec case against ripple is a boost to eth and it's likely a trigger to move to more decentralization in the crypto market says jp morgan emails tied to a former director of Corporation Finance, William Hinman's 2018 speech saying either did not look like a security were published last Tuesday by Ripple in its defense. Senior leadership at the SEC did not rank either as a security in 2018, the report noted, and SEC officials acknowledged that the fact that tokens on a sufficiently decentralized network are no longer security creates a regulatory gap. Again, they have no idea what to do. They're scared. The speech acknowledges that there is another category, adding that it is not a security because there's no controlling group at least in the how we test, yet there may, need, may be a need for regulation to protect purchasers. They were referring to, again, the how we test, which is used to determine which transaction qualifies as investment contracts and thus subject to U.S. securities laws. J.P. Morgan says that these revelations could explain why the regulator has not taken action against ETH while targeting other crypto tokens. Quote, the Hinman documents are likely to influence the direction of the current U.S. congressional effort to regulate the crypto industry in a way that would Ether would avoid being designated as a security. We already know that Gary Gensler loved ETH. Gary Gensler literally loved ETH. He loved Algo. Loved Algo, man. Like, <laughs> talk about, oh, the next Uber is going to be on Algorand. But Gensler did uh, come out recently again and talk about a bunch of these things. How Bitcoin, Litecoin, ETH are not securities. I wish I had that video up right now. That would be absolutely awesome. I think I got it. Yes, I have it. Listen to this. I got it, I got it, I got it. Especially like, share the stream out, woo woo woo. I'm so excited, okay. It's only 12 seconds, my friends. Over 70% of the crypto market is Bitcoin, Ether, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash. Why did I name those four? They're not securities. They're not securities. 
Oh, wow. Oh, gee whiz. Oh, gee whiz. Something we didn't know. Crazy. Could this be even more support for Ripple that on top of the Hinman documents that could influence everything, saying that he didn't classify that Ether is a security and that tokens on a sufficiently decentralized network are no longer securities and creates a regulatory gap? This could be used as evidence in the future, maybe to help XRP come out with that W. Now, XRP, we could take a look at XRP price if you guys would like to look at it. XRP tried to test this 54 cent range. Oop. XRP tried to test 54 cents. We had a wick high to 56, a close, uh, well, a close here, technically, of 51 cents, but we didn't have the highest close, I think, was 53, almost 54 cents, but not quite. Not quite. Then we took a dip. We are now, again, trying to head up to 50 cents again with XRP. So, man, we're going to see how that turns out. And speaking of tokens and drama, man, drama, crypto Twitter drama, there was a meme Bob token that tanked 45% because Elon Musk called its Twitter bot account a scam. He said, this sure looks like a scam crypto account. It will be suspended. And it took a dip. And it was basically, um, it was basically like an AI um, that they used that was associated with this token. And it went viral in late April because it writes summaries and comedic responses to tweets. And Elon even said, I love Bob to explain this Bob post in April, which resulted again in a price surge. However, Elon said that Twitter would crack down and suspend accounts that seem to game its verification system and self-promote or advertise in a misleading way. R.I.P. Bob token. Can I find Bob on here? Bob. Yeah. R.I.P. Bob. R.I.P. Bob. Poor Bob got wrecked. As you can see, we saw where that money flow came in. Sad. Just, oh my gosh. What happened, man? This is why meme coins are scary, man. Because they just... Woo! Can I, let's see, Gensler. How's Gensler? Oh, sheesh. Uh, not much going on, man. Not much going on. RIP these meme coins, dude. RIP the meme coins. And these meme coins are constantly, and it seems are constantly being investigated by on-chain sleuths. Now we have Zach XBT that's got sued? Zach XBT, what? And the crypto community donated what? How much? They donated $1 million to Zach XBT after a defamation lawsuit. Apparently that Zach XBT received USDC tether and a, a assortment of other coins like Jesus Pepe from hundreds of wallets. Bankers, backers included crypto exchanges, Binance, security firm Certic, Tron Creator, Justin Sun, among others. Most of these funds were received on ETH with smaller amounts sent from Arbitrum, BNB, Optimism, Polygon, Phantom-based tokens. He moved the funds to another address as of Monday morning. But Machi Big Brother, otherwise known as Jeffrey Huang, last week sued Zach XBT, an independent blockchain detective, after the on-chain sleuth published a report last year alleging Huang embezzled tens of millions of dollars worth of crypto. The lawsuit filed on Friday in the district court for the Western District of Texas alleges Zach XBT defamed Machi Big Brother, inflicting serious reputational and monetary harm on him. Zach XBT faces one count of libel and one count of libel per se, according to the complaint. At the time, Zach XBT asked followers to support the legal costs associated with the lawsuit, aiming to raise at least a million dollars, and so he did. And so he did. Man, I, if there's one person I wouldn't want to mess with, it's probably Zach XBT because he'll pull up all the receipts on you, bro. All the receipts. Now, there has been some speculation about Machi in the past. Now, I'm not trying to get sued, so I'm not going to say anything much on it because I'm scared that if I say anything, everyone's going to be like, oh, I'm suing you. I'm suing you. Pew, 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 pew. What is going on here? What is going on here? Anyway, I'm happy I'm not involved in that Twitter drama. Uh, but... 
Good luck to Zach XBT, I guess. Uh, and I hope that the truth really does come out. Because if someone's doing something wrong, then you gotta, you gotta point it out, no? You gotta point it out. Internationally, yes, this is, no G, drama, drama, drama. I am not doing the drama. Schmikey, thank you for the five roses. You guys are loving me on TikTok today. Thank you for the roses. I see so many roses popping off over there. Roger Rabbit, Bitcoin is the future. I agree, fam. I agree with you 100%. Ash, nice to see ya. Make sure you guys are smashing these likes. Let's get 150 likes. Let's get 150 likes. We have 127. That's awesome. Let's continue getting after it. Now, France's markets regulators back global rules for DeFi. They are so scared of DeFi. It is actually insane. I We had that stream from the Bank for International Settlements, and they were talking about how they had to create something to fight DeFi because they are scared. They're actually scared because they can't control it. France's top markets regulator, a, a, I, can't, I won't even go for that one, AMF, said it supports globally coordinated rules for DeFi. And in a discussion paper published Monday, the AMF, which issues licenses to crypto exchanges, are looking to operate in the country, shared its preliminary thinking on the regulatory issues raised by DeFi or disintermediated protocols that make up the DeFi ecosystem. The AMF takes a step at defining DeFi, the decentralized government systems known as DAOs, and the automated smart contracts that run transactions. The paper also raises associated risks and levels of controls for the debate. Due to the cross-border and reach of DeFi activities, the AMF also supports the development of global coordinated approach towards regulation to ensure a global level playing field, which should both aim to protect investors and foster innovation, the paper said. At a meeting with reporters in May, Secretary General Benoit flagged the paper as a contribution to the EU policy development of DeFi, while noting that it will prove complicated to categorize participants, unlike those found in conventional finance. Because again, they can't find who do, does what and how people could actually run this technology without their permission. It's crazy. The AMF fully supports these initiatives and intends to increase its engagement with stakeholders, both public and private, with a view to allow the emergence of a balanced regulatory framework that will help support the sound development and decentralized finance in the long run. Jurisdictions are increasingly regulating centralized crypto exchanges and DeFi protocols are a challenge to supervise because of the lack of a specific entity to target for compliance. Again, because cryptocurrency is just code. You cannot stop code. They're struggling with this everywhere, even in the EU. They wanted to promote a kill switch for DeFi for smart contracts because they know this is something that they can't control. Thank you for the five roses, Schmikey. I appreciate it. Thanks for the love. Thanks for the love. Ice God. Um, so no one wants Bitcoin to drop to 15K for re-entry asking for a friend. Um, no. I Listen, everyone slept on Bitcoin. We already had nap time. We already had nap time, Ice God. We had nap time. You remember this? We're sideways trading between 15 and 17K for two months. And no one did a thing? No one did a thing? No, no, friends, if you missed out, you missed out. And we're still early. Anything under 30K Bitcoin, in my eyes, is a gift. Of course, not financial advice. But if you believe in Bitcoin, you feel the long-term vibe. Creighton says, if you see 24K again, count yourself lucky. I feel you, man. I feel you. No, g like if you snooze, you lose, buddy. Listen, again, we're still extremely early. When Bitcoin was 69K, everyone was like, oh my sheesh, it's too expensive. Why would I buy Bitcoin right now? It's too much. It's too much. If it was, if it went back down to 20K, I'd buy again, no problem. Psh. You know what? All those people talk smack. They all talk smack. Because when Bitcoin did end up taking that dip, like this, taking that dip, to 15, 16K. Did those plebs buy? No. You know what they did? They took a nap. Remember? Everyone slept. You see the volume? It was dead in the water. Dead in the water. Money flow? Barely over that zero line. Barely. For a month. And did they buy? No. They continue to talk.
we will not do this anymore. I am literally out of my chair. I am out of my chair. They slept on Bitcoin. And then when it go, went back to 30K, people started to panic. They're like, oh my gosh, wait, I missed out on 15, 16K Bitcoin. It's not going to 10 grand. It's not going to $8,000 Bitcoin. Oh no. So they decided to hang on Bitcoin. We will not do that. We will not do that because we know that with the history of Bitcoin, whenever Bitcoin has gone down 75, 80 plus percent, that it always went back up and surpassed its previous all time high. Now, is this a get rich quick operation? Absolutely not. Because this, these cycles are like four years long. This is not for the weak. These are not for the lettuce hands. These are for the diamond hands. We are not napping. We are smiling. We are smiling because we know that if we dollar cost average, if we had patience, if we had tranquility, if we did our own research, we would understand what's going on with Bitcoin and we wouldn't be afraid. Wah! Threw it. Threw it away. We don't sleep on Bitcoin here. We do not sleep on Bitcoin. I believe in this space. Now, nah, at the most, I, I'm so bullish on Bitcoin right now. I was bullish at Bit on Bitcoin when it was seven grand when I came in in April 2020, created my Twitter account. I was so bullish at seven grand. I'm still as bullish at 26. And I will be even, I will still say bullish at 69K Bitcoin. I will be bullish on Bitcoin forever because I understand that the need for Bitcoin is ever growing. The banks are not doing well. Look at the bank stocks, they are struggling. Over 722 banks lost over 50% of their capital within the first quarter of this year. We are halfway throughout the year and where are the numbers? We do not have any clarity as what is going on in TradFi. Our national debt just reached a new high of $32 trillion. The money printer has no limit, but there is a limit with Bitcoin, 21 million Bitcoin. A halving every four years, which we are less than a year away from at this point. We are not sleeping on Bitcoin because we understand its significance. We understand the role it has to play. Just like Michael Saylor and I were talking about, money is some, this is money that cannot be taken from you. 90 years ago, what was our own government in the United States trying to do? Take your gold. We cannot let them take our property. We have three inalienable rights, my friends. Life, liberty, and property. Why would we give that up? What do I think of ETFs? Listen, man. I feel like ETFs give these trad fry bros some sort of, I guess, comfort. Where they're like, oh, I feel so much better now. I'm buying Bitcoin through an ETF or a trust. Oh my gosh, I feel so much better. Whatever floats your boat, man. Whatever floats your boat. Because at the end of the day, if you really understand Bitcoin, if you did your research into cryptocurrency, you would instantly realize that we are buying Bitcoin itself because we are being our own bank. We are having money that can't be taken away from us. That is the point of the movement. Not to go buy an ETF and have yet another asset that could be manipulated in one way or another. You're buying through another broker. You do not own it yourself. You are not getting the proper exposure. Thank you, Amarez, for your $2.79 super chat in Canadian dollars. It says wait for it is the sticker. I'm waiting for it. I know Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is inevitable. Period. Absolute period. 
Oh, my friends, I, I your name is in a foreign language. Uh, but thank you for all of your roses and your love. You said, what do you think about the Lightning Network? Listen, man, I, I, I think the Lightning Network is pretty zesty. I'm not going to lie to you. I enjoy the Lightning Network. The thing is, is the notes could get a little too... They might not be feasible to run in the future, which I think we started to see a little bit of that when we, the BRC20 token thing was going off. Um, hold on, let me see if I could pull up um, an article from recently uh, where I was reading about it. But the Lightning Network, uh, they were trying to, they were starting to get a little expensive to run a node. Um, and and also Lightning fees were starting to go up. BRC20 tokens and ordinals also caused Bitcoin um, fees to go up. So I do think this is kind of proving that Bitcoin, at the end of the day, people are going to... Travel, oh my dining, gosh, Kevin stores. Hart. Stop it. People are going to want to have something that, again, like Bitcoin, might be used as a store of value in the future. I think Lightning Network is great for the smaller transactions, but where did Lightning Network come from? It came from Litecoin. Litecoin is just like Bitcoin. 84 million Litecoin has four times the supply. And you also have that having that's happening in 40 days. Thank you for the heart me. And also, uh, you have MWeb, which gives you that fungibility. OmniLight, where you build on top of it, and you could use Litecoin without the need for the Lightning Network, which, of course, there is no need for the Lightning Network on Litecoin. It, I believe it does have it, but you really need it um, because of the feasibility already, which it's hitting new all-time highs in various ways every single day, Litecoin, between transactions, et cetera, et cetera. So I like the Lightning Network. I just think that a lot of people are going to want to hodl their Bitcoin in the future and maybe use something else um, as currency. Digibytes uh, is Bitcoin's buff little brother, Mark says. I, I do enjoy Digibyte a lot. Uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Digibyte, proof of work, uh, fee feasible, really amazing stuff. So, yeah. Putting an emoji wrench in your name and spamming the chat doesn't make you a mod. <laughs> that, that, is, that is true. Uh, Roger Rabbit, he's like, I'm a mod. I deserve respect. I think he's just trolling. He's funny. Roger Rabbit. Can I get a salute? Sure, my friend, for you. August 2nd, Litecoin halving, Miss Teen. Yes, Crypto Shrimp. Absolutely. I'm very excited for the Litecoin halving. We have Litecoin block rewards going from 12.5 Litecoin to 6.25 Litecoin. Thank you for the insight. No problem. Listen, I still like Lightning Network. I use Lightning Network a lot personally because I like I like to give little zap little tips and stuff in my Telegram chat. But at the end of the day, I think people are going to want to hoggle their Bitcoin and um Hopefully it still stays feasible to use Lightning Network. But again, you're still kind of taking your coins off chain and everything like that. Um, Dave Digital said, wait, what? <laughs> that was like a personal attack for Dave Digital. Oh, poor Dave Digital. Hi, my friend. Uh, Rick is encouraging the smashing of the likes. I do encourage the same. So make sure you guys are hitting those likes. Aru, nice to see you. Um, well, at least you're saying the right things. Others are just pro ETFs. Again, if you, I believe in choice. I believe in a free market. I do not believe that the stock market is a free market. I do not believe that it is truly what it is. Because again, First Republic, if you look at First Republic Bank when it was going down, they halted the stock nine times in one day. That was only one day. Why didn't they let the price just go where it needed to go? Or where people were directing it, where the market was moving? But no, they halted the stocks and they manipulated it. The same for AMC GameStop stock. When Wall Street Betson on Reddit ramped up the market so much, it was the worst, one of the worst days in history for hedge funds. It's because it's not a free market. They had to halt the stocks. And it was a way that obviously the big boys weren't prepared for. When the big boys get hurt, that's that's where the market all of a sudden halts the stocks. Right? At least with Bitcoin crypto, even if it's a complete sheesh coin, at least you have the right and you are taking the risk yourself of either making those gains or losing it all. But at least it's up to you. At least you're responsible for it. And at least there's no halting or manipulation in that way where wherever the market, the people take the price is where it goes. And you get to own it, trade it, sell it whenever you want. You don't have to wait for the stock market to open. Again, the market's closed today. Bitcoin's 24-7. Rant number 26. Yeah, um, I ranted a lot today. I And it's not about even saying the right things. It's just about like being the for, like a fundamentalist here. 
I'm a fundamentalist for this space. I fundamentally love Bitcoin. A lot of people are like, oh, she's a sheesh coiner. This is not, bro, calm down a little bit. Calm down. I'm pro Bitcoin to the max. I am not a maximalist. I just love Bitcoin in the fundamentals that it stands for. Even, you can't say Bitcoin is the only coin. I don't believe in that. But I do believe that Bitcoin is like the king. It really gives you the ideas or executes the ideas of a free market, individualism, property, currency, being your own bank. Bitcoin just en encapsulates so much of what we need in a digital revolution. I love Bitcoin, but I also do love the whole space in which we do need to decentralize our data. We do need to decentralize our assets. We do need to take control of our identity. And that is where other blockchains come in. I am fundamentally for the space. I am fundamentally for everybody here. Proof of work, decentralization, being your own bank. That is what I am here for. That's it. That is it. <laughs> Roger, I can't, man. Hi, uh, Ken says, sing it, sister. Yeah, I, I'm going off. You guys actually missed it on TikTok. I was singing earlier. I was like, TikTok, come on, TikTok. Sometimes I have to sing to TikTok to make it work. Um, you know, I, I, I turn on the TikTok live. I'm sitting there for minutes by myself. And I think I have to talk to make it work. So I'm like, I'm like, TikTok, let's go TikTok, make it work. And then people come on. So I, I don't know. And a lot of people seem to enjoy the singing earlier today. So that seems to be it. If you guys have not yet, I highly, highly encourage you to be a zesty individual and stay on my YouTube channel post stream and make sure you guys watch the Michael Saylor interviews. I literally can't. Hi, um, hi Crypto Unlimited. How about passive income in DeFi? I, I think that's honestly the future. I think a lot of people are, again, want to be their own bank. They want to be a part of a decentralized financial ecosystem in which in DeFi, you're able to take out loans on the blockchain and do all of these other things where you would normally be stopped from doing that. You don't have to be an accredited investor to invest in things. If you look at traditional finance. You have to be an accredited investor. You have to have a certain amount of money in your bank account in order for you to be allowed to invest in things. That is not fair. That is not a free market. That is holding people back so they cannot get ahead. So DeFi, I, I am all for DeFi. And even if you take a loan out on the, if you take a loan out or something like that, you see that on the blockchain. So I don't get why DeFi is so bad when it's very transparent. It's just that there are no intermediaries. So the central banks don't get their cut. The banks themselves do not get their cut. The governments do not get their cut. And that's where the salt comes in. That's where the salt is on the wound. And they go, ow, ow, no, our money is being taken away. Ow, ow, ow. The president of the European Central Bank said it herself. The reason why they have to create a central bank digital currency, the reason why they have to basically fight DeFi and create all of these rumors about it that are simply untrue is because they need to maintain their status as the monetary anchor in the traditional financial system that they have been for decades. She said this herself. Again, check out this podcast <laughs> from uh, from Friday. Uh, me and Michael Saylor. What a time. What a time. So insightful. A really good show. It was a good conversation back and forth. I know um, a lot of if I, I was reading through the comments and a lot of you were there and a lot of you dropped some really nice comments. So I really do appreciate it. I do um, think who's a better singer, Emma or MTC? Definitely me, I would say. I would definitely say me. Emma trying to sing is funny. Uh, Crypto Shrimp, Shrimp, thank you for the heart me and joining my team. We have like 23 members over there. It's so spicy. Retro Mike, what nice to see you. Where have you been, bro? Where have you been? Um, Aru was watching it live. Awesome. And sh shots fired. Oh, my gosh. Um, sing is spelt like this, LOL. Sharknado, nice to see you over there. Sharknado, I like that name, little Sharknado. Little Sharknado. Make sure you guys check out uh, <laughs> Pow Pow. 
I can't. Make sure you guys check out this live stream. I had a great time talking with you guys today. Um, I do have to head out, my friends. Get on with the day. Get on with the zest. But make sure you guys check out that podcast uh, and smash those like, share that stream out, share this stream out. Make sure if you haven't yet, again, smash those like, share the stream out, subscribe to the channel. Make sure people understand what's going on with Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, the markets. We have money printers going burr. No debt ceiling until 2025, basically. What? What? But at least we got Bitcoin in a finite supply of 21 million Bitcoin. Oh, Frugal over there on Kick. Nice to see you, man. Welcome to the Kick stream. We have a finite supply of 21 million Bitcoin. We get to be our own bank. We get to take in our inalienable rights of life, liberty, and property. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Have a great day. A lovely Monday. Sip that coffee. We are fueled by coffee and Bitcoin. I'm going to take a sip of this. Stay zesty. Peace.